أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلا Praise be to Allah, we seek his help and his forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray, and whomsoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the servant <coughs> and his messenger. In Surah Al-Ali Imran, chapter 3, verse 102, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah the Exalted reminds us, Bismillah rahman rahim Ya ayuhal lazina amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O you who have believed, fear Allah, be mindful of Allah as his due, and do not die except as Muslims in submission to him. And in Surah Al-Ahzab, chapter 33, verses 70 and 71, in the same way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us, Bismillahir Rahman Rahim, Ya ayuhal lazina amanu taqullaha wa qulu qawlan salida, يُسْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَمَنْ يُتِيَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا O you who have believed, fear Allah, be mindful of Allah, and always say a word directed to the truth, that He may make your conduct whole and sound, and forgive you your sins. He that obeys Allah and His Messenger has then attained the highest achievement. In Surah Al-Kahf, chapter 18, verse 28, Allah the Exalted reminds us, Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Wasfir nafsa kama alladina yaduna rabbahum bil wadati wal ashi yuriduna wajha. Wala taudu ain, wala taudu ainaka anhum turidu zina tal hayat dunya, zina tal hayat dunya, wala tuti o man al fana, wal bahu an zikrina wal taba, wal taba hawahu wa kana amruhu furuta. Content yourself with those who pray to their Lord morning and evening, seeking his approval, and do not and do not let your eyes turn away from them out of desire for the attractions of this worldly life. Do not yield to those whose hearts we have made heedless of our Quran, those who follow their own low desires, those whose ways are unbridled. Dear brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah, on this day of Juma, we gather together and we offer our prayers as a community, as a congregation. <coughs> and as a congregation, we are reminded of our diversity. We come and we do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks from us, the main thing.
being the main reason why we are on this earth, which is merely to worship Him and to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are establishing our self, we are next to one another, regardless of our status, regardless of our the size of our bank accounts, regardless of our background, regardless of whether we are educated, non-educated, whether we hold um, wealth or not. This diversity, dear brothers and sisters, is such a treasure that it often escapes us. And this beauty of this coming together as a community in worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and putting away any differences that we may have between one another is an important point and is at the heart of Islam. Today, what I want to reflect on is by reflecting on this verse that we have read from Surah Al-Kahf, some of these aspects of our own diversity and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be mindful of with whom he is sitting down with. It is especially important because our societies are socioeconomically diverse, because we have racial, uh, we have ethnic diversity in our community here in America. If you look, Muslim American community is probably the only faith community that doesn't have a dominant racial or ethnic group uh, as the most populous within it. If you look at other faith communities, uh, our brothers and sisters, mostly you would see one ethnic or racial identity to be the dominant population within those faith uh, communities. Now this is going to be important for us because it is a treasure for our communities, but it poses certain challenges. Now, if you reflect back on the verse that we read from Surah Al-Kahf, right? Wasbir nafsaka, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this verse, according to Mufassirun, is addressing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Content yourself with those who pray to their Lord, morning and evening, seeking his approval, and do not let your eyes turn away from them out of desire for the attractions of this worldly life. The verse continues to say, do not yield to those whose hearts we have made heedless of our Quran, those who follow their own law desires, those whose ways are unbridled. <coughs> now the Mufassirin, they, they reflected on why this verse was sent and at what context. And they explained to us that these verse addressed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they are really meant to address one exchange that the Prophet Sallallahu had with the leaders of the Quraysh. The leaders of the Quraysh, according to a tradition related to us by Ibn Abbas, they would come to the Prophet Sallallahu and they would tell him that it is below them to sit down with those who were around the Prophet Sallallahu Especially referring to people that they deemed to be coming from lower economic backgrounds, lower social uh, strata, lower uh, status. They would refer to people like Bilal ibn Habashi, radiallahu an, like uh, Suhay, Ammar, Kabab, Ibn Masud, right? these blessed Sahabis. And they would say, these people, they are not elites of this community. We won't come and sit down with you and listen to you if you continue to associate with Separate yourself from them so that you know we'll sit down and we'll listen to you. Right? They ask him to send them away, and such that you know they would come uh, and listen. And this is the context, according to Professor Moon, that this verse came to the Prophet Sallallahu reminding him of the very fact that what he should prioritize is not those who are of power those with wealth, or those who might have higher economic or um, other standing in the society. But rather, to be content with those that remember their Lord in the morning and in the evening. Referring to the Sahabis, referring to the community that surrounded the Prophet 
And again, that community itself was diverse. There were people who were slaves. There were people who were you know, servants to the leaders of the community. There were people who were leaders of that community, and that community in itself was diverse. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is defining those people as those that he has made heedless of the message of the Quran and those who are way, whose ways are unbridled. If you remember, we are going to see other occasions in the stories of the prophets, similar things happen, right? Remember, for example, the story of Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. Again, people from his community were telling him, uh, they were saying that uh, we see that none but the meanest and the most shallow of our people have become your followers. People who follow you are not ones like us, the, the, the boastful ones, the ones who have power, right? And in response, Nuh alayhi salam would say, I am not going to drive away those who believed in me, nor can I say about those whom you disdain, Allah has not bestowed any food on them. The Prophet himself was coming from a humble background. And that he himself never associated you know, power, never associated that status with him. Now these are reminders for myself and for all of us because we live in a society where we are asked or we are encouraged to be bossed, to be arrogant, right? If not, you know, people will, will walk all over you. If not, you know, you need to get, you know, everything, the best of everything you know. It is also important to remind ourselves of this because not only our communities are racially and ethnically diverse, our communities are also economically quite diverse, which is a reality that sometimes escapes us because, alhamdulillah, we are blessed with Many community members who are blessed with wealth and they do so much for our community, may Allah bless them. But at the same time, in every aspect of our mosque life, whether it's programming, whether it is uh, different aspects of our uh, life, we need to be aware of this. And I'm just going to cite a few figures from a research that was conducted by uh, a Muslim American institution, uh, by the Institute for Social Policy and Understanding. ISPU, a Muslim think tank, they conducted a survey and they found that American Muslim community, contrary to some of the stereotypes around our community, is not necessarily all rich uh, and, um, and you know, well financially endowed community. It found that, alhamdulillah, around 18% of Muslim Americans have income levels upwards of $100,000 which is a blessing for our communities, and we are thankful for that. That same figure, 18%, is 31% in the general population. But the research also found that 33% of our Muslim American community at large earn around $30,000 a year, which can translate to below federal <coughs> poverty levels, depending on the size of the that same figure, which is 33%, is 24% in, in the larger uh, community. Which means that our communities are financially diverse. There are many needs that this reality poses for us. And it needs, it makes us, it should make us, think about our programming and where we divert our resources to as we continue to build these institutions in America. But at the same time, it should make us be mindful of the fact, the very fact that we find the Prophet Sallallahu message and his, his da'wah, which is to continue to work with everyone and to continue to work regardless of people's backgrounds and to address them and to associate with them not based on the power that they may hold or the wealth that they may this is important for our community as our community is becoming more civically active, 
as our community is asked to join campaigns, right? If you think, and inshallah, in the second part of the khutbah, we are briefly going to reflect on the idea of finding the right balance between having good things and avoiding uh, being arrogant. Uh, in the example of one verse and one narration from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But that it is important for us to join forces with those people who are fighting for economic equity and inclusion and equality of everyone. Campaigns like the Poor People's Campaign, campaigns that seek to bring food justice, campaigns that, bring, that seek to bring housing justice and inclusion and equity to people, these are all lofty goals for our community to be involved uh, in. And when we have the opportunity to speak truth to power, we shouldn't avoid doing that. We should be people of conscience and people who are giving this message when it is due. Inshallah, we'll reflect on some other aspects of this uh, in the second part of Huli Qabi Dear brothers and sisters, the verse that we reminded one another of from Surah al kaf and as the Mufassirun has reflected, one that came to the Prophet encouraging him to continue to associate himself with those who were mindful of God who were remembering the God and not necessarily be swayed by those who might hold worthy power or worthy resources. is an important point for us and to keep this diversity within our communities. And the main goal here, really, is for all of us to take any hazard and any pride from our hearts and to look <coughs> to one another with that message of, I am a servant of God. I am on this world trying to worship my creator and trying to know him in the best way possible. And my brother and my sister around me is the same. We are all in this path together. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran has advised our Prophet and us in this path. And he says that we shouldn't be arrogant. If you remember the verse that we probably, you know, talked about in the past from Surah Al-Rahman, chapter 31, verse 18. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Wala tusahir haddaka lin nasi wala tamshi fil ardi maraha. Inna Allah la yuhibbu kullu mukhtalin fakhur. Do not turn your nose up at people, nor walk about the place, this earth, arrogantly. For God, does not love arrogant, self-deluded, or boastful people. Here we have this message that can come and become a focal interest point for us as we continue to build communities, as we continue to make our communities one that is welcoming to a broad array of uh, our community. And as we continue to develop resources and programs that meet the needs of our diverse are very beautiful community. Now, of course, in all of this, we need to <coughs> be mindful of one challenge that faces us. Right? The challenge is, again, to miss uh, the mizan, the, the balance that needs to be in our uh, actions. Right? To give an example right, on this idea of arrogance, avoiding arrogance, but is it okay for me to, to have worthy possessions, or should I be ashamed of us. In a hadith narrated to us by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may peace and blessings be upon him, he said, no one who has the weight of a seed of arrogance in his heart will enter paradise. And someone, one of the, one of the Sahabi said in the audience, but, O Prophet of God, a man loves to have beautiful clothes and shoes. In response, the Prophet said, Verily, 
Allah is beautiful and he loves beauty. Arrogance means rejecting the truth and looking down on people. So there is a there is a balance as as in everything in a, in our theme about these issues. Yes, you know, we may have you know, possessions. Yes, we may be you know okay with that. But if that starts to translate into us looking down on others, if that translates to bring that arrogance into our hearts, that is the point where we stop and we say, "Hey, let me remind myself of the very fact." that I am on this earth trying to serve my creator and my brother, my sister, is doing this. And that would be a way for us to manage and to benefit from the economic, racial, uh, ethnic, uh, educational uh, diversity that our community uh, presents. And that diversity can be a blessing for us or can be a challenge for us. It's going to be up to us, depending on how much we give an ear to the message of the Quran and our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because we have clear guidelines over that in making sure that you know, we manage this diversity in the best way possible and make it a silver lining for our community and not merely see it as a, as a challenge, inshallah ta'ala. We pray that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala allows us to understand his Quran in the best way possible and the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the best way possible and to enrich our communities um, through this we pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that he keeps us on firm ground that he purifies our intentions and enables us to serve his, uh, his way and that he never makes us prisoners of our own wills and our own desires we pray that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala overlooks our shortcomings for we all have shortcomings all going to have shortcomings that he forgives uh, our sins we pray for everyone who is oppressed and in suppression and suffering under wars famine and, and other calamities and we pray that their tribulations are lifted as soon as possible we pray uh, that we are united with our prophet wasallam, and in our loved ones in the jannah we pray that we continue to build our communities and that we are able to serve our communities and humble ourselves through serving uh, our communities, we pray that we benefit from the knowledge that we seek. We pray for the institutions that seek to serve the community and the individuals that contribute and that build those institutions like this one. We pray that their uh, mission is facilitated. We pray uh, to be part of that, that beautiful mission, inshallah. God commands justice, doing good and generosity towards relatives. He forbids what is blameworthy, shameful and oppressive. He teaches you so that you may take heed to Africa.